Now, as stated earlier, XFOIL doesn't use the displacement body model. Instead, it uses wall transformation. Now, these produce essentially the same results. So we can look at the difference between the inviscid and viscous results that XFOIL produces to see the impact of this displacement body uh, model, both on the airfoil surface and the weight. So from XFOIL observations, which should be familiar by now, we know that A0, the lift slope, is not a function of alpha uh, for the inviscid case. But this seems not to be the case. For a viscous model. So the inviscid model just continues on linearly, whereas the viscous model begins to have a decreasing slope and eventually will reach a maximum. So we know physically that airfoils stall at high uh, angles of attack and that uh, the either equivalent displacement body or wall transpiration model uh, indeed seems to capture this as we see in XFOIL. But why exactly? What is going on that allows this behavior to be captured um, using something like a displacement body model? Now, a very intuitive explanation from this comes from uh, combining what we know of thin airfoil theory with the details of the displacement body model. From thin airfoil theory, we usually gave the result for a general cambered airfoil as 2 pi alpha minus alpha L equals 0. But if we define the lift coefficient per unit span at zero degrees angle of attack to be CL naught. Then what we get is that CL we can write as 2 pi alpha plus CL naught. So CL naught is this point on the graph. And alpha L equals zero is this point. So through alpha L equals zero, we know that CL naught depends purely on the airfoil camber shape within the scope of thin airfoil theory. We had alpha L equals zero, negative one over pi, integral from zero to pi dz dx, cos theta naught minus one, d theta naught. Uh, here, dz dx is the local camber line slope at theta naught, and theta naught is defined by the transformation x equals c over 2, 1 minus cos theta naught. This is just defined for mathematical convenience to make this integral easier to evaluate. Now, what we did before was we interpreted the zero lift angle of attack to be an effective angle of attack, uh, or I should say we interpreted the negative of the zero lift angle of attack to be an effective angle of attack caused by the airflow camber. And we can see that more curvature, so larger dz dx, will result in a minus alpha L equals zero that's increasing. So the magnitude of zero lift angle attacks increasing, but it's getting more, more negative. Now, qualitatively, this approach applies to thick airfoils as well, but the lift slope will be different. But the rest of these conclusions will, the rest of this argument will hold true. So let's now use the displacement body concept along with um, our experience that the suction side or upper surface boundary layer 
becomes thick due to flow separation at high angles of attack to explain airfoil stall. So if we take some perhaps very lightly cambered airfoil, let's draw this twice, and first we consider, say, coming at zero angle of attack, and then at some large angle of attack, maybe, I don't know, something like 15 degrees, then we expect the boundary layers, in this case, to be thin, gradually thickening towards the trailing edge, but remaining well attached throughout. And while things won't look very different on the pressure side at high angle of attack, on the suction side, separation is likely to occur and the boundary layer will become much thicker. So now the camber line is defined as the line which lies halfway between the upper and lower surface. Um, and we can see that that's effectively the same thing for either the airfoil or the airfoil plus displacement body for this case. So it's perhaps something like this. Because that the delta N or the displacement thickness is roughly the same on both sides of the airfoil. The airfoil camber line and the airfoil plus plus displacement body camber line are essentially the same. Now, of course, the airfoil hasn't changed here, so its camber line would still look as is shown in the top picture. But if we consider the uh, airfoil plus displacement body and define a camber line based on that, what we see is that the effective camber line is turned upward by the separation and the thick boundary layer on the upper sides. So basically because there's a high delta N at the rear on the upper surface, this camber line turns upward. So the camber line that's seen by the potential flow outside of these blue lines is based not on the airfoil only, but on the airflow plus the displacement body. And so one way to think of this is as a viscous flap that's being deflected upward as the angle of attack is increased. So a way to interpret this is that the local PCLD alpha is always about 2 pi, say if the boundary layer is kept fixed. But it's CL naught that's changing. In fact, it's decreasing. As alpha becomes large. So the airflow plus most displacement body is being decambered by the viscous boundary layer growth. And I'll draw this in more detail to try to make sure this idea makes lots of sense. So here's our alpha axis, here's our CL axis, and let's start and say this is the inviscid solution, and then perhaps ever so slightly offset to um, boundary layer thickness, even when flow is well attached, is a line with the same slope, um, which will correspond actually exactly with what the airflow is actually doing at small angles of attack. Now, as the angle of attack gets larger, this curve begins to flatten out. And if we say, go back to our case, that maybe this was that 15 degree point uh, that we considered here, then we could have another line with precisely the same slope. Which passes through this point.
almost parallel to this other blue line, but now has a different intercept. So just again, explain this step by step. The black line represents the inviscid result. Both blue lines are lines of slope 2 pi. The red curve is the actual scale of alpha result. And what we see is that this is CL naught based on the airfoil camber. Whereas this much lower value is CL naught based on viscous decambering. At say alpha is fifteen degrees or whatever we want this to be. So the local lift slope hasn't changed. What's changing is that CL naught is sort of a moving target, which is decreasing as we move to higher and higher angles of attack because this camber shape is moving up and up. Maximum lift will occur when the viscous decambering effect overpowers the lift slope DCL the alpha. And so that after that, further increases in angle of attack actually reduce the lift in this region.